right, welcome to another installment of the Fragments of Silicon Reviews. Four reviews up this week. The first of which is a game called Bleeding Moons. I'll be honest, I'm not exactly sure what um, what the title has to do with the game. It could have been either a place where I didn't get to, you know, either in the story or uh, this is a very spindly tale. Um, because... Uh, one of the central mechanics and um, philosophical underpinnings is choice, fate, free will, destination, that kind of thing. And how that works in terms of game mechanics is, you know, your choices matter. Um, not just, like, necessarily down the line. Like, you're going to be making some major choices that are going to affect you in the, in the immediate aftermath. Because... Well, I suppose a bit of background is needed. Like, um, you are Ian, uh, like Ian D. Valmain. I think that's how that pronounce, that's pronounced. This game has a lot of its own lore, a lot of names. Um, so, you know, if I mispronounce something, it's because it's not a thing that actually exists. Anyway, um, you're the second son of the, uh, of the Count of the country of Valmain, um, who's, you know, doing typical, let's, you know, doing typical royal noble things. Uh, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit murky because, t like, tech it's a county, so it it's led by a count, but, you know, nobility ranks are weird, but... Uh, point is like you're a noble you know you're a noble who um plans on marrying a common girl um but also has to um maybe get into an arranged marriage because you know that's what nobles do i'm like i'm being vague because you know sto uh, story spoilers and all that stuff um but circumstances are such where um, he is sent to become a, essentially a logistics officer to a bunch, to a mercenary camp. But he soon becomes, well, a, an actual mercenary. Um, wet works division, like uh, black ops, the blackest of black ops, you know. And this is like one of the... Uh, if not the major moral underpinning here, you know, it's like, you know, what do you do on these missions and how do you accomplish this without compromising your morals? Or maybe you do compromise your morals, whatever those might be. Now, as I said, um, I suppose a bit of warning up front. This is a very dark and very mature game as in, yeah, you're, you know, you're going to have to potentially murder people and not just in the heat of battle either. I won't go into any more details, but, you know, you, you're going to be pressed to do some fucked up stuff. Um, you will also be pressed to do some rather light and goofy shit as well. Once again... I have hired you, know, you to scare the crap out of a kid at his birthday party. Don't hurt anyone, just scare the crap out of him. Not that far... Uh, the mission I'm thinking of is not that far off. <laughs> uh, I'm like... It's more... It has to do with staining a dress with some ink. I'm like... It makes sense in context, but I can't really give that context because, once again, um, it's one of the missions. Um... Anyway, outside of the whole, you know, can you get through this war with your moral compass and, or at the very least, your uh, your conscience and your soul intact? The other big choice is romance, um, as this game is a mixture of visual novel and the best I can come up with is like an RPG maker RPG game, except. It plays out more like a point-and-click uh, adventure game. It's a bit, it's a bit weird in its hybridization, but rest assured, this is basically a visual novel. 
um, in terms of how it plays out, um, in terms of choices and all those sort of mechanics. And indeed, one of the major components of many a visual novel, indeed many a visual novel we've covered on the show, is romance. Um, turns out you have the choice of about three ladies to romance. Now, in broad terms, there's the um, peasant girl love of your life. There's the arranged marriage duchess. And then there's your mercenary tag team partner, who actually happens to be a girl, you know, like the only girl in the camp. And, you know, your choices will determine whom you hook up with and whom you don't hook up with. I'm not exactly sure if you can hook up with, like, mul multiple. Then again, I suppose to define hooking up, you can certainly fuck more than one person. I'm like, in terms of romance, I think there's just the one choice. You know, uh, once again, it's one of those games. Um, I suppose other trigger warnings to be mentioned. Uh, this game deals with sexual assault. Um, there is implied rape and there is, you know, a pretty graphic attempted rape. So that's a thing. Like, and yeah, uh, if you're sensitive to such material, I'll say right now, don't play this game. Like, um, because this game is pitch black in its uh, darkness. Like, and, you know, it's definitely, a, it's an actual mature, mature title, too. It's not doing these things for gratuity or um, shock value or surface level stuff like it, okay it's first of all this is like medieval times this is war time uh, you know these kind of things actually happened in real life um and having that you know having this stuff happen um in the game isn't out of character or anything like that uh but it's rough stuff nonetheless um, you know, in terms of the actual writing, I'm a bit mixed on it. Like, it's very well written, but it's really perfunctionatory. Like, you know, the writing gets the point across, but it's on the dry side. Uh, it, there's very little in the way of, say, prose or poetry. Like, um, kind of makes, though it kind of makes, makes sense given the personality of Ian. He is a bookworm, but, you know, he's more, like, technical manual savvy, although he, there are certain things he d hates reading, like business books. Um, you know, um, you know, he likes books, but he's not a poet. So writing is in keeping with that. Um, and... In terms of how it all gels together, uh, fairly well. I suppose it's worth a mention that this game has won a whole bunch of, uh, like, uh, writing awards. At, like, uh, got seven awards at the Alex de Or contest, which, admittedly, I don't exactly know what is. Um, but it won oh, best... Oh, contest the author made up specifically so he could win it. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, like, uh, but it's got it got gold medals in best game, public choice, best scenario, best direction, best world, and silver medals in best story and best atmosphere and immersion. So, that's a lot of medals. Based on which, it's probably some sort of visual novel comp or so, it's some sort of yeah narrative adventure. Um, we are actually interviewing the creator of this game this Friday, so we can ask him what this actually means. I'm like, you know, um, let's see, you know, breaking down the awards, best game. This is n definitely not going to be my best game of the war uh, year, um, but it's fairly solid, you know, more in-depth rating a bit later. Public choice, it seems like uh, the public of this award 
you know, liked it well enough. Best scenario. Indeed, the scenario is very good. The, the direction, eh, I, I can see it. Best world. Um, yeah, once again, you know, there's a lot of lore to this world. There's a lot of politics. There's a lot of background flavor. Um, but once again, uh, it's served pretty dry. Um, I think that's my biggest critique about the whole writing. It, you know, it's on the Weedabix st- side of uh, flavorings. You know, good, you know, good solid work, but, you know, not much taste to it. Uh, the story itself, honestly, the story isn't is kind of secondary because this, this really isn't a story driven um, affair. It's a character driven uh, affair. There's a difference. You know, it's because the characters and their interactions are the main engine driving things forward. Like the, the story is certainly important, but it's definitely secondary to Ian and his. Uh, interactions to not just all of the romance partners, but, you know, his mercenary boss and what have you. You know, Ian's relationships is what really defines uh, this game. It's another reason why all the background stuff is kind of flavorless. They're not. It's just not that important to pay that much attention to. Um, best atmosphere and immersion. I'm like, I suppose so. You know, it's a, you know, it's a bit hard to judge that given what this game is doing, because honestly, I've never seen a game do this kind of um, <clears throat> genre mix in and of itself. And um, other factors, um, the music, the music's really good, like a lot better than I was expecting, given everything else on display. Um like the music is, at, uh, I'm assuming like real instruments, but or at the very least they had approximation of real instruments. Um, really, you know that is definitely some moody and atmospheric stuff going on here, and enhances the flavorings of this visual no- novel hybrid. On the other hand, like um, the weak part in terms of the aesthetics is definitely the character portraits. There's no getting around it; they look pretty amateurish bordering on unfinished at times like um i suppose it's not doing any active harm but it's pretty distracting compared to um the level of which everything else is working on um and let me see pricing so this game just came out uh like a few days ago. In fact, that's why we're reviewing it in the here and now. Um, and the game is clocking in at $8.99 with a 10% discount. It's $9.99. Um, and in terms of like visual novel pricings, that's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. You know, I know it's not exactly laid out by a visual novel, but I think it, it's close enough where I can confidently call this a visual novel. Um, you know, uh, it's just, yeah, if you don't want dark, you don't want mature, look elsewhere. Because this is, the, this you can't get around dealing with bad shit. Because, you know, you're a mercenary who's working in a war. Who's doing unsavory things in the name for the greater good, presumably. You know, it's like, not... That's not really ever going to be a sunshine and rainbows scenario, like. Um, but I think it treats weight of what you're doing with the utmost respect. So you know, it doesn't come across as a Family Guy, where when it tries to tackle heavy issues, it it doesn't know how to do that because you know you're a goofball comedy, and all that stuff. And overall rating, I suppose I'd have to go an eight. Like one of the better games I've played this year. Like, um, it's just, it's not, it's an acquired taste. Definitely. Um, 
So you might not be in the mood to partake in this particular tonic. And yeah, that'll about do it for this review. Um, that'll about do it for Bleeding Moons here. Uh, coming up after the breaks, the Galax will be regaling us with a game called Explosive Dinosaurs. <laughs> 